Hey everyone, I'm back, and uh, as a small model collector, I like to collect small models of small cars, and so this is a uh, AutoZam AZ1. It's actually, AutoZam is actually a sub-brand of Mazda. I never knew that. I always just thought this car was made by some random, like, kit car company or something like that. But apparently this is a mid-engine K-Class uh, sports car, and uh, it is a brand owned by uh, Mazda so they ma designed it and manufactured it this is actually brand new it's never been opened before oh maybe uh, I'm wrong no because there was tape there never mind it might have been opened but I just cut that tape there anyways uh, the design team was led by a Toshiki Toshiko Hirai okay sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right I mentioned this name because uh, that person was also also responsible for uh, leading the design team for the uh, Mazda MX-5, also known as the Miata. So uh, I'm sure most people know about that. Which does make me segue to a Mini GT coming out with a Miata. And a lot of people are requesting pop-up headlights. I think, guys, that's a bad idea. It's going to make the model look bad. You know, it's going to have all these atrocious gaps near the, the headlights. Anyways. Okay, so this uh, car in the real world was uh, sold between 1992 and 1994, a pretty short run because uh, Japan had a recession and so uh, not many people needed a miniature sports car at that time. Uh, the body is uh, fiberglass, fiber reinforced plastic, kind of like a cor Corvette, or at least the old Corvettes. I don't know what the new Corvettes are made out of. And then it's got a steel chassis. And what makes this car interesting is it has gullwing doors like a 300 SL. Uh, maybe you can kind of see through the mold, but I'll compare it to some photos of the real car to give you a better idea later. And then the engine was actually supplied by Suzuki, as in uh, Suzuki motorcycles. It was a 657cc uh, engine, and it was actually turbocharged as well. It was also an engine used by the something called the Mazda Carol, which I don't know what that is and it made around 60 horsepower, a little over that. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's all I know. Uh, well, the last thing I do know is around 5,000 of these are made. Uh, a few of those hundred were uh, branded as a Suzuki Kara, so they had a similar car, just a, you know, badge, badge swap. Okay, well, anyways, let's look at the, the model here. And uh, starting on the side here, it's black. I think these came out a long time ago, so I didn't have a better color choice. I just went with what was a, a reasonable price I was willing to pay. Uh, I think these are steel wheels, like uh, stamp steel wheels. They seem all right. Got these cool little vents here. This must be the door handle for the gullwing door to swing up. I can't imagine what this would be. Maybe it's a bump stop. So if you have like a garage, you know, the thing won't hit the roof and scratch your, your um, door possibly I mean you gotta remember this is in Japan so maybe parking spots are really crowded there okay anyways this is some sort of reflector perhaps a turn turn blinker you got these uh, uh sub windows pretty interesting I imagine just this part rolls down reminds me of like the Subaru SVX or uh, possibly the DeLorean I don't know I forget okay anyways fuel filler cap Let's go to the back here. Pretty nice printing. Unfortunately, they're not uh, plastic inserts. It could have easily been plastic inserts. These lights aren't that small. And historically, Yoshima does do plastic taillights, so I'm not sure why they skipped out this time around. But at least they're printed really nice. I mean, the, the definitions there the, between the silver and the orange, they're not like running into each other. Nice printing. It's always nice to see something printed on the license plate. Pretty nice uh, ribs here for this grill texture. Pretty nice. And I think that's part of the casting. I don't think it's a separate plastic piece. You can see this tiny little exhaust tips, painted silver. Pretty cool. So let's look at the bottom here. Anything? Well, this time around it says Aoshima made in China. A lot of Aoshimas, they don't even write their brand on there. Tire tread looks pretty good. Uh, screwed together if you want to paint the interior or do a wheel swap of some sort. Okay, how about this side here? Got my fingerprints all over it. 
Uh, yeah, no major problems. Uh oh, wait a second. Every time I say that, I find a problem. Yeah, uh, that's nitpicking, but something's something's a bit off there. A stain or something. Okay, let's go to the front. AZ1, nice. A little orange paint in there for uh, probably the turn signals. Pretty funky, weird, uh, weird headlights here. But what's nice is you can kind of see, you know, how the plastic is circular and goes in, so it makes it look like there's a light bulb back there. I think that's cool. So this hood badge. Yeah, focus, please. Maybe I'm too close. So is that an A Z or something? No, I don't know what that is. You know, because I'm not familiar with the with AutoZam in general. Okay. Anyways, uh, yeah, it must be some sort of vent here for the. Uh, I assume it must have an intercooler, being a turbocharged engine. Okay, so Aoshima always uses black plastic, it seems, for their interiors. <clears throat> so it seems it's it's better because you know you got clear windows up here, a lot of light gets in there, so you can actually see the interior. I would say the the greenhouse glass isn't too distorted. Oh, look at this. I just noticed that I think that's a spare tire right there. And you know what? Let's get the flashlight out. Let me find that thing. Right? I think that's got to be a spare tire covered in like fabric or something. And there's like a little tie down strap over it. Uh, maybe that's too much light. All the details, just no other color, no decals or anything. Alright. Well, I gotta say, it's pretty cool looking, I think. I wish I, you know, couldn't. Well, there are other colors out there made by this brand. I think there's a red one and possibly a yellow one. If you look up Aoshima AutoZam, you'll, you'll see photos of it. But uh, they're pretty pricey on eBay, just to forewarn you guys. So I imagine this model may have come out a long time ago maybe like a decade ago or more but uh, I don't really know for sure I didn't research it that much I was just excited to get it <clears throat> okay so for those that uh, may not be aware of K car class uh, regulations in, <laughs> in Japan they're basically small cars because uh, tax benefits you know it's less taxing on the roads if the car weighs less they're easier to park because they're smaller, they take up less space in, say, a crowded Tokyo. And then I, I'm guessing crowded Tokyo must have some narrow back alleys or something that this, this would do better in. But anyways, let's uh, take a look here at some photos of the real car. So here's the front view. Maybe this is like a Mazda museum. There aren't many photos of this car with these steel wheels. Most people have photos of a, you know, aftermarket wheel swaps. But, um, boy, I'm not sure if I can focus on that chromed, chromed wheel. Yeah, I mean, it's similar. It's like a perimeter of holes and stuff like that. So I would say that's actually pretty accurate. One thing that seems to be missing is the rear wing. Maybe, I don't know if it's an option when you bought these cars. I don't know. Okay. Alright, here's a rear view. See, there are those aftermarket wheels that are very common. Perhaps an aftermarket muffler. And then that rear wing again is missing. But I really want to show this because you get to see the gull wing doors. Alright, so it's basically a miniature Mercedes 300 SL. Or a miniature DeLorean or something you can consider. I think it's cool. Okay, so... Um, let's compare it to some other vehicles here. You know, the size of it. So, uh, the very first K cars were only 360cc engines, so this is one of them, it's like a Honda N360. This one is made by Konami. Uh, yeah, it's an N360. So it's going to be smaller, the maximum dimensions were smaller. There you go. But uh, later on, they expanded the CCs up to 660ccs. Uh, and the dimensions obviously grew as well. So, okay, so this one is made by CMs, and there's no information at all, but the brand is called CM apostrophe S, 
and I believe this is a Subaru boy I actually forget what this thing was called <laughs> I have a review of it yeah I have brain fart sorry I don't even know what this thing is called but that's why I, I got it because I never knew it existed but anyways that's a K car as well and it it did rally race with Colin McRae so now you're talking the similar dimensions because they're both trying to meet the maximum allowed dimensions to maximize interior space maximize you know engine room and everything so okay so let's I think a lot of people pretty much in any part of the world recognize the the more modern uh, Fiat 500s right but in certain countries it should be considered small now a Fiat 500 is not a K-class car it's just a small car so it's actually not that much bigger actually right it's definitely taller though okay so let's get this out now B.A. Baracus he pities the fool driving a little car like that right so assuming if green light is actually accurate in its dimensions which I, I see no reason why it wouldn't be because green lights all their models vary quite drastically in their sizing because I think they are actually 164 scale but uh, now you get an idea at least if you live in the in countries with large roads Australia America yeah this is kind of a small car right so okay well I guess that's it for the comparisons and I suppose it's also it for the review so if you like uh, miniature K-class cars if you like uh, weird random vehicles this model might be for you it's uh, made by Aoshima it's called the AutoZam AZ1 alright thanks for watching everyone we'll see you in the next one